Welcome back. In this workshop number two, we're going to do a quick introduction to mesh refinement as well as geometry idealization. To get started, let's go ahead and open the workshop two folder. And we're going to start where we left off in the last workshop. So we're going to go ahead and open the landing gear link simulation file. And what I want to do just first real quick is clean up this view. And we can do that by uh, turning the visibility of, of certain items off. So we can turn off the visibility of the coordinate systems there, as well as the constraints and the loads. And that just cleans up the view a little bit. I'm also going to hit W to remove the origin indicator there. So if you recall from the last workshop, uh, we had a peak stress. Uh, was in the corner here and there's a few things that uh, we can notice from this mesh is we've got some holes up here at the top and if we take a closer look we can see we've got some kind of long and skinny elements uh, these elements aren't great quality um, these holes are pretty small so what we can do is we can uh, do some geometry idealization and remove these holes because they're small enough so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the idealized part. Just going to double click that and it'll load up real quick. And then I'm going to go ahead and make this the displayed part. Now we have the idealized part, um, which is referencing the master part. And the first thing, if we want to do any type of geometry preparation here, is we need to create an associative copy of the geometry. And we've got two options to do that. We can either promote the geometry or we can wave link. Uh, for this sim these simple edits, I'm just gonna go ahead and promote. So I'm gonna select the promote uh, button here and it's gonna ask me what body I wanna promote. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the, uh, the landing gear link and click okay. And now from the part navigator, you can see we have a promoted body and we are able to make some edits. So using the synchronous modeling, I am going to quickly uh, just delete the holes here. And synchronous modeling, there's a bunch of options here. Uh, they're very, very useful. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite ways to do geometry preparation is just uh, pushing and pulling things around with synchronous modeling. Uh, the great thing about it too is even if you don't have a native NX part, uh, you can use uh, these commands on any imported part. So I'm going to go ahead and select the delete face command and I'm just going to pick on these three holes. Hit OK and as easy as that, the holes are gone. So the next thing we can do is we can um, go back. So if I right click here and say display FEM, I want to go back to the FEM. Uh, I've got the geometry uh, simplifications done that I want. So now I need to go back to the geometry or to the, to the FEM and you're going to get this information message window that says uh, we've made some edits um, and it's just really just giving you some information. Occasionally there'll be some errors here, things you need to fix, um, but that's pretty rare. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK uh, to close that down and you can see the mesh uh, it still has these holes in it. And the other thing you'll notice is up here on the upper left of the toolbar up here, we've got an update uh, button that's not usually present. You also see the icon here on the FEM shows a little uh, refresh symbol there. And if we drill down to the mesh, we can see there's also that same refresh symbol. Uh, what those symbols indicate is that there is an update pending and we need to update our mesh. So I'm just gonna hit the update button and uh, Sim Center will uh, rerun the mesher and update that mesh real quick. Now the other thing I can, I can notice is down here at the bottom um, or in the middle of the link where the, the mount bearing surfaces uh, meet the bottom half, uh, there's a fillet down here and you can see the way this is meshed, it's, the fillet's not really, um, the contour of the fillet really isn't uh, being followed. So the other thing I want to do is I'm just going to quickly uh, edit this mesh. And you recall we used an automatic size uh, in the last 
workshop. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and bump it down a little bit from that automatic size. Hit OK. It's gonna remesh here, and you can see it. Uh, the mesh follows that fillet uh, a lot, lot closer. Okay, so we've removed some small geometry uh, that wasn't needed, as well as refined the mesh a little bit. Now we can go back to the uh, simulation file. Just double click it here in the simulation file view. And we can turn back on our constraints and our loads. And you can see that uh, because we define those on the faces of the geometry, uh, those constraints and loads are still valid. And our mesh is automatically loaded and we can go ahead and run uh, this analysis. So I'm gonna hit the solve button, go ahead and hit okay. And it'll kick off uh, NX NAS strand to solve in the back background. Now you can see from the information window here that we've got NX NASTRAN uh, version 11 and we get when when the job is complete we'll get this message we saw this uh, in the last workshop and I'm just gonna go ahead and click no and you can see that it closes that uh, that window the solution monitor there so this information window uh, just gives us some information about uh, what is happening before we kick off an X Nastran. Uh, and we're just going to close that and we can close this job um, monitor as well. So let's go ahead and look at the results. Um, instead of uh, double clicking on the results file here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight to the uh, post processing navigator. And you can see the results here, they're kind of grayed out. We can right click on that or we can double click it. And we want to load those results. And you'll see that they're loaded now and uh, the results are, are there. Now, von Mises stress is such a um, common used stress that instead of drilling down and selecting von Mises, we can just double click uh, the stress element nodal here and it'll go straight to the von Mises stress. Now there's a few things to notice that's kind of interesting here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my max annotation. And if you recall the previous model, the max, the location max stress was right here at this uh, warm spot here. And now with the finer mesh, it's moved uh, to the fillet there. The other thing you'll notice is previously we had a peak stress of about uh, 2700 PSI. And now we're at about 3,200 PSI. Uh, that's an increase about 20%. So that's a pretty pretty big increase here. Um, and you'll notice that you know we achieve that uh, just by refining the mesh. And so um, this workshop wanted to illustrate uh, that there is a balance between uh, a coarse mesh and a fine mesh. And it's always important to take a look at your mesh, take a look at your results, see if things look, look real. Uh, you wanna be careful not to have too coarse of a mesh or else you won't properly capture uh, the stress state here. And on the flip side, you can have a really, really fine mesh. Um, and the challenge there is if you get too uh, many nodes and too many elements, uh, it's just going to take forever to run. So, and your results aren't going to get that much better. Um, so it's best just to uh, take a look, uh, refine it maybe once or twice and see as things kind of even out. You could even do a formal uh, mesh convergence study. Uh, however, I find as the, the more you do um, analyses and the more familiar get, you get with uh, running uh, simulations, you get a good good feel for what, what's good and what's not. Uh, so anyways, that wraps up our uh, workshop two. Um, and in this workshop, uh, we did a quick geometry idealization and some mesh refinement.